misrepresentations of marriage. You know, it, breeds, it has begun to breed fear in the heart of believers, especially. When you see things going on on social media, when you see your couple goals coming out to say, you know, nasty things about the things that are happening in their marriage, you're like, I beg, I beg, I beg. I don't think this thing is for me. But the truth is, God has an in the beginning picture. And I think that I believe so strongly that what God is doing to us tonight is to help us to realign us to that in the beginning picture. Hallelujah. Praise God. There, there is also the aspect of our experiences. The way that pain and disappointment and the unexpected has begun to reshape the way we think about marriage in a way that makes us feel like there is no optimal when it comes to marriage. Like there has to be, something has to be given up. You can't have, you know, there's that picture in some of us Ed, that you can't really have everything. Like sweet husband, sweet wife, you love God, you're fulfilling purpose. Everything is just, in quotes, perfect. It feels like there has to be something that you are dealing with. But God is saying, there is a perfect picture in my heart that I want for you. So it is not, it, yes, you, you might have had experiences. You might have had challenges. But there is something in the heart of God for marriage, for each and every one of us. There is a desire. There is an in the beginning picture for us. Hallelujah. And so what has, what, what has happened is that there is now a lot of fear in terms of, some of us think, I don't think, especially singles, I don't think I'm ready. And when you dig down into the purpose of, I don't think I'm ready, what is actually down in the beneath of that, I don't think I'm ready, is actually fear. And God says, I see it. I see it. I'm not, just, I'm not just seeing your lips. I'm not just seeing your, what you are saying. I'm seeing the bottom part of what is happening in your heart. And I know that it is fear. And God is saying, I want to deal with it. The reason why there is fear is because we, you are not seeing eye to eye with God when it comes to marriage. So the reason why you are feeling like what if, you know, you've had parents that have misrepresented marriage to you and you're like, I don't want to end up this way. But you are just saying it out of, you want to confess something good. Deep within your heart, what is there is, that, is a fear that you are going to end up that way. And the Holy Spirit is saying, I want to deal with that. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is saying, I want to deal with that. Because many of us are actually at the tipping point of our supernatural manifestation. And fear is actually what is standing in the way. God is bringing so many things in your direction, trying to push you in the direction of destiny. But you are so afraid by this structure and picture of marriage that is sitting in your heart that is not in the heart of God for you. And the Lord is saying, I must uproot that, that picture. I must uproot that structure. I must uproot that stronghold that makes you think that you cannot have the best of God when it comes to marriage. Hallelujah. In scriptures, we have different words that are translated fear. But two stood out for me while I was trying to research. And one speaks to a person or a feeling of loss of moral fortitude or loss of moral gumption. What is able to push you in the direction of what God wants for you is missing. So you might think, ah, I have nothing to fear. Everything is good. But you are in, an, in a space of indifference. You are not, there is nothing in your heart that is pushing or a desire for the will of God. It is not the, it's not the will of God for you to be in that space. 
And the Lord is saying it is fear. It is fear for you to lose the fortitude to walk with God and to see the desire of God for your marriage. It is fear. Hallelujah. Another word says a withdrawal because of feelings of inadequacy. So some of us think, I don't have enough money for the men. I can't be, I can't, I can't be, I don't want to bring children to this world to come and suffer. I don't want to bring a woman to my life to come and suffer. And the truth is, beneath that statement is a fear of incapability. Is a fear of inadequacy. You think that what makes you adequate in marriage is your financial status. But God is saying, that's not, that is not what, what preparation for marriage looks like. Hallelujah. God wants to deal with it. So God is calling us to a place of opening ourselves up to dealing with the bottom pots. You know, many times we say so many things and it's, those things are formed out of things that we are not consciously aware of. So, for example, you can say things like, men are scum, men are scum. Just because you see it on social media, men are scum, you see you join it, men are scum, men are scum. The major reason why this, when you read the statement, men are scum, on social media, your spirit doesn't kick against it. It's because there's something inside of you that accepts the idea of men as come. And God is saying, some, it, deep always calls to deep. When you have a deep-rooted revelation about God, when something that is contrary to that comes up, your spirit kicks against it immediately. We all know. We all know those areas where we've seen, you know that when you see something, you'll be like, no, 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 no. I can't be there. The reason why men has come doesn't feel strange to you is because something in your inside believes that men has come. So you have to open yourself up beyond the layers of the things that you're hearing and saying to actually see the position of your heart when it comes to marriage. Some people, you know, as I was thinking about it, and I was just like, it does it not look like this is skewed to us single people? The Holy Spirit began to show me that it's actually even deeper in marriage. Because when you're married to somebody, I don't know, help me, because I'm not married, but that's what I think. <laughs> when you're married to somebody, you're married to their future. You're, you're, not, you're not just marrying their present. You know, if we do husband and wife, you have, you have gone to your house. But you, what you are actually marrying is who they are going to become. Because that is a journey to forever. So, for many of us, the picture of who they are going to become is not settled in our hearts. So, there is anxiety and inassurance about what that future is going to look like. Even though you say, mm, I believe he's the right person for me. As far as you haven't caught a picture of what that future looks like, there will always be that inassurance. And the devil can play over it very well. Very, very well. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit is saying, come, let's deal with it. And the Holy Spirit reminded me of Ega. When she, when she fled from Sarah, she fled into the wilderness. And she was just there believing that she was on her own and it was time for her to move on. But God said, I see you. Even when you don't think anybody sees you, even that portion of your heart that you think nobody sees, God actually sees it and God is concerned about it. God is willing to actually sit down and deal with it. Hallelujah. So, the point tonight is, there is, there is, there is a picture in the heart of God for you, for your marriage. And there, there are so many things sitting in our hearts that are not allowing us to access that picture. The Holy Spirit is saying, they are not hidden from my eyes. In Psalm 139, David said, where can I hide? From your, is that if I run into 
hell, you are there. If I go into heaven, you are there, your hand will keep me and reach me. Hallelujah. God is there. His, his eyes are wide open, seeing into the corners and the spaces of our hearts. Hallelujah. So tonight we are going to be looking at four core principles in the scriptures that God has set for us to be able to, as, that God has set as counters to, because he knows that we are humans, right? And there will be inassurances as far as we are not able to see at the same frequency with God. That's why that scripture says, as far as the heavens are above the earth, that's how the thoughts of God are from ours. But what God does is that he wants to bridge that gap through revelation. Hallelujah. And so, God is teaching us tonight four key things that he has set for us to use as the gap bridges. <laughs> I don't know if that's the correct English. Hallelujah. The first is sonship. Romans chapter 8 verse 15. If we can read it in the Passion Translation or in Message Version. <sighs> Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. So we can start reading from verse 12. Okay, from ver this, this is Passion Translation. We can start reading from verse 12. It says, So then, beloved ones, the flesh has no claims on us at all, and we have no further obligation to live in, ob in obedience to it. Next verse. For when you live controlled by the flesh, you are about to die. But if the life of the spirit puts to death the corrupt ways of the flesh, we then taste his abundant life. The mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. And verse 15 says, And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty, leading you to back into the fear of never being good enough. But you have received the spirit of full acceptance. Say the spirit of full acceptance. Enfolding you into the family of God. And you will never feel orphaned. Say I will never feel orphaned. For as he rises up within us, our spirits join him in saying the words of tender affection. Beloved father. Hallelujah. We are still going to read the message translation. But I just want to pick out... Uh, Two things from what the Passion Translation says. When we understand the position of God as a father, we realize that our assurance and our acceptance is in God. Hallelujah. He says you have received the spirit of acceptance. He says that he's saying that. When it comes to the vision of God for you, what you need to be able to fully operate in that vision, you have it, and that's the spirit of acceptance. It says that God is not looking at you as a mere man, mere man but he is looking at you as one that is begotten out of him, which means that the spirit that dwells in God that's created the vision in the first place is resident on your inside. And that spirit is the spirit of acceptance. He's saying that no matter the physical evident weaknesses that you have, he's saying that you have the spirit of acceptance. You know, many of us will read this scripture and we would want to practically use it for, ah, my walk with God, I have the spirit of acceptance. But God is saying in your marriage, you have the spirit of acceptance. God has accepted, you are accepted in the beloved. You are capable by the spirit of acceptance to fulfill the vision of God over you. The spirit of acceptance qualifies you. It brings you into the position of the being that is able to carry out the vision of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm trying to look for another word to qualify this. But that's the point. The spirit of acceptance. 
And what that means is that God as a father is, he identifies with who you are and is able to, able to, to make you become the person that will fulfill his vision. Hallelujah. So when it comes to marriage, there is a becoming that God is making in you that will bring you into that state that you are able to fulfill the vision of God for your marriage. So, it's, the fact is you have the spirit of acceptance. Hallelujah. Let's read the message version, if we have it. Okay. Have to read from here. Okay. It says that the resurrection life you received from God is not a timid grave tending life it is adventurously expectant that's the word adventurous expectation you know the position of a child the position of a child in the hands of their father means that they look up to their father for the manifestation of what they desire so for those of us that have children, your, your, your children are constantly creating needs for you to meet by their adventurous minds. They want to go to Disneyland. They have never been to Disneyland before. They don't know what Disneyland looks like. But in their mind, they just, they are just, they just have the ability to create that desire to make you fulfill their, their needs. Hallelujah. God is saying that as sons of God, what he has put inside of us is the spirit of adventurous expectation. That we will be able to desire the vision of God. That your heart will be able to open up to actually desire what God wants for you. So some of us, our desires and what God wants, they are just like, this. you are desiring CDH. God is like, mm. now pastor, you don't know whether it will be CDH, but shy, pastor, shy. God is going to put a desire in your heart to actually begin to see and desire for a life of purpose and a life that preaches the gospel. By yourself, you'll be like, I want a marriage that will be going around the world preaching the gospel. You do not know where it came from. It's the spirit of adventurous expectation. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is literally going to put desires in your heart for the vision that he has for your spouse so that you can start to pray about it and see it manifest. Is the spirit of adventurous expectation. So the Holy Spirit is the spirit of adventurous expectation. He will put in our hearts the desire to see the vision of God manifest. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to also talk about, that's from the sonship part. I want us to talk about the fatherhood of God. There is a particular... Um, understanding of God's fatherhood that speaks very richly to me and I feel I, I sense to share. So in Psalm 84 verse 7, Psalm 84 verse 11, sorry. Psalm 84 verse 11. The Bible says, for the Lord is a son and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. He says, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Hallelujah. So for me, in this scripture, I always picture God as, this is God's posture. Like constant. God is never in this posture. He says, no good thing will he withhold. As far as that thing is good, this is the way he is. This is the way he is. He's always giving. As far as it's a good thing, and it's good for you. It's good for your destiny. This is the way God's hands are. He says, no good thing. So, if marriage is a good thing, is because it's actually even, I won't say it's a better thing, Sha, but in the, because it is a desire of God himself, I don't know what else can be better than that. Something that is actually the desire of God for you. I don't know if there's anything that can be better than that. So, if marriage is a good thing, if a blissful, purpose-fulfilling, happy, enjoyable marriage 
is a good thing. This is the way God is. So, God is never, you know, the devil will make you feel like because of something you did in 2092 that has not even happened, that God is not going to give you a good marriage. That you are going to have to suffer. Like you have to wait. You have to, ah, you wait. When you say waiting, ah, you have to wait, oh, because you, that your sins are as bread as scarlet. That you have to wait. But God is saying, I'm always like this. I'm always like this. When it comes to good things, I'm always like this. He's, he's never in a withholding state. Hallelujah. So what typically just happens is the receiving part is the Holy Spirit that is helping us. Because when you, are, when you want to receive, when God is giving, you, ha- you also have to be in a posture of receiving. So the Holy Spirit is the one that is now helping us to say, oh yeah, turn, do like this, stay like this, do like this now. You are walking away, come back, this is the way you are meant to be. It, that's, that's what the Holy Spirit is literally doing to many of us. God is, you already know that God is immovable. So, he is always in this posture. He's the Holy Spirit that is now the captain of our salvation. Ah, oh yeah, you, are you this guy? This is where God is. Oh yeah, my boba. Stay here. This is how you will receive. Stay like this. Many of us, you are already like this. God is like this, you are like this. And, he's, and the Holy Spirit is literally just renavigating us. Yes. Hallelujah. So, God is saying, for fear, I'm giving you sonship. I have given you fatherhood. I'm always willing to give. And I've given you the spirit of acceptance. I've given you the spirit of adventurous expectation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second thing that that the Lord has given us in scriptures against fear is power. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. Second Timothy 1 verse 7. It says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So power is, literally God is saying, spirit of fear, go. Spirit of power in, in the place of fear. Spirit of love in the, in the place of fear. Spirit of sound mind is in the place of fear. Hallelujah. Let's read Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. We are going to read a couple of scriptures just to establish something on that this point. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. It says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yes, I will help thee. Yes, I will uphold thee. With the right hand of my righteousness. Can we count how many eyes are in these scriptures? I, eyes that is God's eye, not our own. For I, one, am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God too. I will strengthen thee. Yes, I will help thee. Yes, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Hallelujah. Psalm 23 verse 4. I want us to pay close attention to these scriptures because all of the scriptures that we're going to be reading, there's something common to them. They speak against fear and they speak about something that is present. It says, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Psalm 118 verse 6. Psalm 118 verse 6. One eighteen, one eighteen. Okay. All right. It says, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. So, why will, why, why will I not fear? It says, the Lord is on my side. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. That's the final scripture that we're reading for this point. Joshua 1, 9. It says, Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. 
for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. So, the com two common things to this scripture. No to fear. But what is that major thing that, that is the reason why there is no to fear? Is because I am thee. The presence of God is our greatest, is our greatest asset. The Lord says, I am with thee, <laughs> God. I am like me, 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 God. I am with you. Think about it. God is with me. See, eh, the moment God is not with you again, just, let us be going on. Let us be, but it says God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. It says, in that Isaiah scripture, do you see how God kept boasting about himself and his ability to help and his ability to, to walk you through your journey? He says, I, I will be with you. I will uphold you. I will strengthen you. Because I, 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 I am with you. I think that one of the biggest revelations of matrix and Patriarchs of the faith, and they are like their source of strength that, that, that has made them to really excel is the presence of God. If you read about it, the, the fact that they are conscious of the fact that God is with them, it's just it just wins the battle. God is with you. God is with you. God is not trying to punish you. God is not trying to punish you. God is not trying to make you go through a tough marriage to, to kill you or, to, or to, to make you feel, ah, okay, I went through this, so I've paid my dues. No, we are not paying any dues. Jesus has paid our dues. God, God, God is with you. God is with you. He's on your side. Yes, God is on your side. Actually, God is on your side. And as I'm saying it to someone, the devil keeps bringing in your heart that the evil tree is God on your side. God is on your side. If God is not on your side, you yourself, you know that you won't be here today. So many experiences that should have swallowed you up. God's mercy has picked you out. God is on your side. Somebody is thinking that their children will not turn out well. God is on your side. God is the giver of children. And when it comes to parenting, the ability to parent is of God because he's the owner of the vision. He said, train up a, a child in the way you should go. How will I know the way you should go? Because is it not the person that created the child that knows the way you should go? Exactly. The spirit of accurate parenting is of God. And if he was not going to be there with you, he won't give you a child. So God is on your side. That, those children are evidence that God wants to walk the journey with you. God is on your side. God is with you. That's where your power lies. That's where the ability to run the race of marriage, and to finish strong, that's where it lies. The presence of God. The fact that God is there. You. And that's the reason why, okay, we'll come, to, we'll come to sound mind. I wanted to say that's the reason why we must have rectitude. Because rectitude shields you and keeps you where God is. Hallelujah. So that you will not go and be gallivanting into areas that God has not, God is not present there for. Hallelujah. The next one is love. Of course, we've read that scripture. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. We'll read again 1 John 4 verse 18. If you can read that 1 John 4 verse 18 in several versions. Maybe first we'll read New King James. You can read the Passion Translation. You can read Amplify just to see the beauty of what the word of God is saying. 
Scripture says there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Let's read it in the Passion Translation. It says, love never brings fear, for fear is always related to punishment. But love's perfection drives the fear of punishment far from our hearts. Hallelujah. So, the deeper the revelation of the love of God in your life, the farther fear is away from you. Scripture says that love's perfection drives the fear of punishment far from us. So, we don't have... A, really, the, the antidote for chasing out fear is being perfected in love. This is what the scripture is saying. So, it's not just merely about casting out fear. It's, the, it's, it's being perfected in love. Giving a, you know, receiving a deeper knowledge of how far God can go for you. Like, how far, like, how, when you say how far is too far, how far can God go to ensure that I finish strong? To ensure that I have the vision of marriage that he wants for me? How far can he go? If he could go as far as sacrificing his only son, how far can he go? So questions like that deepen our understanding of God's love. And that is the way fear is casted far away from us. So the deeper and the richer our understanding of how much God loves us, it, it is the level to which fear can be, you know, cast away from us. Hallelujah. I said, expanding your knowledge of the fear of the love of God and also expanding your love work, you know, Expanding your own expression of the love of God in your life is, is recipe for chasing fear away. Hallelujah. So, if you are a person that maybe you, you feel God has called you to ministry, for example, and you're, you're not sure, you're anxious, you don't know where to start, if you begin to pray for ministry gifts, just saying, I want to start praying from today. I want to start praying because if I'm feeling like this, what about the people that are already doing the work? Ha! Ah, they must be going through a lot though. Let me start praying for ministry gifts. The more you pray for ministry gifts, the more boldness you will have to launch out into your own ministry. So what God is saying is, love, any abode where love is fully represented and fully established, Fear cannot stay there. Hallelujah. So God is saying, love, expand your reach of love. Expand your, deepen your understanding of love. Expand your own wings of, the, of your love work. Expand the wings of your love work. And see, see whether fear can stay. Hallelujah. And of course, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 1, 7 speaks about sound mind. And when we look at the meaning of sound mind in that scripture, it actually speaks to discipline, self-control, sound judgment, rectitude, wise discretion. Hallelujah. So, the spirit of, the, of God that helps us to stay where God tells us to stay is the antidote for fear, according to this scripture. When God says, stay, and you don't jump around, and you stay. An establishment of God's purpose chases fear away. Hallelujah. An establishment of God's purpose in your mind, in your, in your heart, in your thinking, in your walk, keeps you confident in the ability of God. Hallelujah. So, it's not just about... You are praying and, you know, casting out fear and, you know, walking in love. But God is saying, stay where I, I have put you. Stop gallivanting around. Rectitude, 
wise discretion, the ability to hear the Holy Spirit and walk in the, in the direction that the Holy Spirit gives. When Isaiah said, he wakens my ears to hear as the learned. He said, the Lord has spoken and I have not turned my heart away. That's rectitude. The ability to stay in the confines of God's instructions and God's direction. Hallelujah. So, God is, God is speaking to us today to say, an understanding of how much of a father I am to you and how much of a son you are. The spirit of acceptance the spirit of adventurous expectation, the spirit of power, my presence, my abiding presence, an abundance of revelation of love and rectitude and wise discretion. These are my tools for you to deal with the attack of the enemy, pushing fear into your heart and making you think marriage doesn't work. Because it does. Hallelujah. Can we rise to our feet tonight? Let's just pray in the Holy Ghost. As we receive the healing power of the Holy Spirit. And the ability to walk in the word that the Lord has put in our hearts. I want you to highlight one word that speaks the most to you. And just lambano it in prayers. Lord, I receive the spirit of adventurous expectation. My life is full. My life is full of faith, of belief in your vision for me. Lord, I'm deepened in the revelation of your love for me. In the name of Jesus, I will not be swayed to and fro by the thoughts and the distractions of the enemy. My eyes are focused on you and what you are doing with me. Rebato subrenda list of randa kasha lebanda kasi brana nana shadaha in the name of Jesus. I'm deeply rooted in the love of God. I'm established in the spirit of God, the spirit of acceptance. Hey, makabara bano shalabaha. I acknowledge the spirit of acceptance that is resident on my inside. The spirit of acceptance is my answer. The spirit of acceptance is my answer. I am in the beloved. The spirit of Reko subrenesh de brega de belebekos ibarate la gada bana masha da bahaya e masu frega de belebekos masu branda lasta my heart will always leap in adventurous expectation of the next level of your vision for me for my marriage in the name of Jesus sagabala da basta roboko subrenda le gada baragados I want us to pray tonight. Pray. Make sure you are declaring something that the Lord has planted in your heart. Make sure you are watering it in prayers. 
and Lamba knowing it to see the manifestation in your life. Kabara te shala bada maha masubrega debele kosta robako subranda lesta braga dosh ke bada bala baga da maha rokoto bala gado shata ya bada mahaya. In the name of Jesus Christ, for God has not given me the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I have courage to reach out into the next level of God's vision for me. I have courage to reach out into the next level of God's vision for my marriage. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name.